Hello all. I welcome you all to learn about yet another concept in cybersecurity. In this video, we will learn what are different cybersecurity principles. To give you a brief understanding, security principles denote the basic guidelines that should be used when designing a secure system. By the end of the video, you will understand everything about security principles. Number one, compliance. First security principle is compliance. Organizations need to be compliant to the industry-related compliance, like health sector needs to abide by the HIPAA regulation compliance, global regulations, regulatory compliance, statutory compliance. If the organization are not compliant, they are vulnerable to have penalties during the external audits. Compliance is necessary, but not enough. 2. Risk-based security. Security should be applied consistently with a level of accepted business risk. Let's suppose you can categorize different business activities' risks as high-risk activity low-risk activity or medium-risk activity. So you should first try to address the business activity which is in high-risk area and then the business activity from the medium-risk activity. Low-risk activity can be accepted and not always need to be mitigated. Please click on the I button to understand about the types of business risks. 3. Simplicity. The security implemented should be simple and not complicated. To give an example, forcing users to change the password on daily basis make the system more secure, but it will be an overhead for the employees to change the password on daily basis. That is why trying to improve security by reducing complexity of the solution. 4. Reusability and flexibility. Design solutions with flexibility and future reusability in mind. The security solutions should be scalable, reusable, and flexible. 5. Consistency. A good security principle should strive for consistency within and between project teams. 6. Don't assume trust without evidence. This is a basic principle in security. You can't trust anyone just like that. The person needs to verify his her identification either by showing the ID card, inputting the room password, etc. Don't assume a level of trust without evidence of trust. 7. Secure overall solution design. Security should not be treated in silos. Always treat security as an integral part of the overall solution design. 8. Defense in depth. Defense in depth is very important to understand. Defense in depth comes with a layered approach. So let's take an example. If you have secured the entire network infrastructure by a robust password, but what if that password is compromised? So in this case, there should be other defense that could stop the intruder making way into the corporate network. To understand it in a layman language, let's assume a thief has intruded your home premise. So he has compromised the first defense, but he still has to break the locks present in your door to make an intrusion at your room. This could be the example of second layer of defense. 9. Least privilege. Access should be granted with a least privilege objective. You should have the access only based on the jobs and responsibilities that you perform on day to day basis. No more, no less. 10. Separation of duties. No single actor can undermine security of the system. So let's assume you have the authority to create a purchase order. You should not have access to approve purchase order. In this case, 
You can yourself create and approve a purchase order that is a risk. 11. Fail safe. In the event of unexpected failure, the system must remain secure. So let's assume the routing rule of your firewall stopped working all of a sudden, leading all the outside traffic source from internet getting routed to your corporate network, which can be a threat to the organization. So to address this unexpected failure, you should maintain the default rule in the firewall that will not allow the internet traffic, even in case all the other rules of the firewall stopped working, like blocking the traffic from port 8080. 12. Secure by default. Software must be secure by the default configuration. So let's assume if you buy a firewall, the firewall should have a password specific to that machine and should not be generic passwords such as 0000 for all the firewalls. 13. Attack surface reduction. Limit the functionality exposed to malicious users. Please do like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on the cybersecurity area.